It's time for some real education. The tribute money is a fresco by Italian master Masaccio located in the Brancacci Chapel of the Basilica of Santa Maria del Carmini in Florence. Painted in the 1420s, it's considered to be one of Masaccio's best paintings and a key work of art in the development of Renaissance art. Take a look at the picture while I give you some background on it. This is the Brancacci Chapel. It's a beautiful, relatively small chapel in Rome where if you enter it, you will see that almost every piece of wall space has been frescoed. Fresco is when you take wet plaster, you just plaster a, a wall freshly so the, the plaster is still damp. And then you paint in these beautiful colors onto the wet plaster and you watch as the plaster just absorbs the color. Really quite beautiful. The um, Last Supper by Da Vinci is this kind of a painting, a plaster painting. The problem with frescoes is as the older the building gets, the more the paint fades, the more the plaster begins to crumble. So it's fairly ephemeral as an art form, but go back to the picture here. This is the tribute money in the Brancacci tra uh, Chapel, which was done by Misaccio and another artist by the name of Masolino. Uh, it's all dedicated to St. Peter. The tribute money is one of many frescoes painted by Masaccio and Masolino in the Brancacci Chapel in Santa Maria della Carmine in Florence. I'm sorry, I said, I think I mentioned Rome before, it's Florence. When you walk into the chapel, the fresco is on your upper left. All the frescoes in the chapel tell the life of St. Peter. The story of the tribute money is told in three separate scenes, all in the same picture, in the same fresco. This way of telling an entire story is one of one in one painting is called a continuous narrative in painting. And there you have at the center, you see Christ, right? He's got the pinkish uh, tunic with the blue uh, wrap around him in the tribute money, a Roman tax collector, the figure in the foreground in the short orange tunic and no halo demands tax money from Christ and the 12 apostles who do not have the money to pay. Christ in the center is wearing a pinkish robe uh, gathered at the race with a blue toga-like wrap. He points to the left and says to St. Peter, so that we may not offend them, go to the lake and throw out your line. Take the first fish you catch, open its mouth, and you will find a four drachma coin. You can see on the far left side there, St. Peter, who goes fishing. He, he casts his line and he catches a fish. And in the belly of the fish is the tax money, right? In the center of the fresco, we see the tax collector demanding money, Christ to Peter. On the far left, scene two, we see Peter kneeling down and retrieving the money from the mouth of the fish. And on the far right, so all these things are happening in real time, right? In real time, the tax collector in orange is demanding money of the apostles in Christ. In real time, Peter has cast his line and caught the fish. And then you've got the third scene, Right? We see Peter uh, kneeling down on the left, on the far right. St. Peter pays the tax collector. In the fresco, the tax collector appears twice. St. Peter appears three times. You can find them easily if you look at their clothing. So this is really kind of a beautiful picture. Go to the last image, Mike. One of the things that happened at this period, the early 15th century, the early 1400s, huge developments in perspective, in, in ways of painting pictures that gave depth and, and texture to a canvas. Look at how beautifully the buildings behind the gathering of people, the mountains in the distance, the, the sea and the clouds beyond that create levels of depth. And those lines there, those lines, those vanishing lines that come from Christ show you that from whatever perspective you come to this painting, whether you're standing on the second floor of the building, whether you are off to the right, that everything here sort of draws your attention to the center of the picture, all the sight lines, and that would of course be the face of the Savior.